This video is sponsored by Sunflex UK. Dealing with disappointment is a fact of life. Things don't work out as planned, and the best we can do is learn from the experience and move on. Any architect who has been around for a while will tell you about their unbuilt projects. Missed opportunities, unrealized designs, lots of work and nothing to show for it. I've had several jobs over the years that could have been brilliant if only they'd been built. So why didn't these projects go from the drawing board to the building site, and what can be learned from it? Each project was different. Some were always going to be difficult. Others seemed straightforward, but circumstances changed over time. If you are thinking of altering or extending your home, or even building a new house, there are some valuable lessons to draw from these projects. This is the second video in the series, and I've put a link to the playlist in the description so you can see all of them. This is the only project I've worked on with two different clients. You see, most projects start out with good intentions. Clients don't expect their project to go unbuilt, but the original client for this job did exactly that. The second client, however, was a different story. Back in 2009, just after I became self-employed, the client contacted me because he wanted to sell his house in Edinburgh. This was in the middle of the Great Recession, house prices were down, and the property market was very slow. Sounds a lot like today. This guy knew my father-in-law, and decided to give an unproven 28-year-old architect a shot at designing something interesting. Keep in mind, I had never built anything under my own name. This was just my fifth project since starting my practice a few months earlier. The client was clear from the outset he wasn't going to build my design. He just wanted to get planning permission to convert his garage into habitable accommodation so that it would add interest to his property when he put it up for sale. I wasn't going to turn down a paying client, so I got to work. The house is located on a corner behind a larger property. The existing garage had space for two cars and was tucked away at the back of the house. The house has two driveways, and this would pose an interesting question later on. The client saw the potential in getting permission to convert the garage to what is commonly known as a granny flat, that is, ancillary accommodation where guests or extended family members can live separate from the house. It has its own kitchen, bathroom and bedrooms, so is self-contained, but is not a separate property. The client asked me to make it eye-catching, but I also wanted to make it realistic. I figured, why waste the walls and foundations of the existing garage? Let's keep the original footprint. The trouble is, the footprint isn't quite big enough, so I added a story on top. The ground floor would be for living space, and the upper floor would house a luxury ensuite bedroom. I figured the existing foundations wouldn't be able to support this additional load, so I introduced steel columns front and back, supporting beams to span the upper floor over the existing structure. This had the added benefit of creating a sheltered deck to the living area and an overhang to the entrance door, both nice features to have. To set this off, I decided to clad the upper floor in patinated copper. This green metal oxide colour would match the mature trees surrounding the site. The design was flashy, the client was happy, and I lodged a planning application. I was slightly concerned that the new upper floor might cause privacy issues given it overlooked a school playing field next door, but I explained to the planners that all the houses on this street overlooked those fields. The school didn't have a reasonable expectation of privacy. The planners agreed and approved our application. So, job done. I had a happy client who put his house on the market and it sold in due course all thanks to my 3D images and planning approval. I should say that if you own a house in the UK and are thinking of altering or extending it, you can book a consultation with me via the Real Life Architect website. I put a link in the description below. Two years later, I got a phone call. The new owners had been looking at my drawings and wanted to talk about developing the garage. They wanted to discuss the possibility of making something bigger. The new owners wondered if the two driveways could be used to facilitate a completely new build house. The existing house would keep one drive, and the new dwelling would use the other. It turned out Edinburgh Council had a policy preventing ancillary accommodation from being sold off as a separate dwelling. The fact we had gained planning for ancillary accommodation meant we could not change this to a separate house later on. The granny flat was always meant to stay attached to the house. To my surprise, this didn't bother the new owner too much. Ultimately, they just wanted to create a city home for their adult children. In this family, the granny gets the house and the kids get the converted garage flat. I set to work again, and we drew up a brief. They liked the idea of keeping as much of the garage as possible. This would keep costs down. They also liked having the living space on the ground floor and the sleeping accommodation upstairs. They just wanted more space than my original design. 
The new layout had two bedrooms upstairs and a more generous kitchen, living, dining space on the ground floor. I must confess, I prefer the original layout for the first floor with its balconies front and rear. Let me know what you think in the comments. We kept the circular steel columns outside the living area with the sheltered sun deck facing west towards the playing fields. The new design made a liberal use of windows to introduce natural light. If you are thinking of increasing the natural light in your home, Sunflex UK, who sponsor this video, design and manufacture quality aluminium windows and doors. I've used their products on several of my projects and I made a video showing how they offer a great balance between cost and quality, using this project of mine as an example. Sunflex have an installer network who take care of all the measurements, coordination with your builder, installation and aftercare. Check out the video, I put a link up here and in the description. So we had a well worked out design for the enlarged granny flat. I was reasonably confident we would get planning permission for the revised design and the client was keen to go ahead. So what went wrong? I didn't hear from the client for several weeks until they contacted me to say their father, who was leading the project, had become extremely ill and everything was on hold. I didn't hear back from them after that. Nine years later, a large two-story extension was built on the side of the house, but I wasn't involved. That's just how it goes sometimes. Fate intervenes, and a very nice design goes unbuilt. My name is Neil, and I am a real-life architect in the UK. I regularly make videos about the reality of altering and extending private homes. If you would like to see more, please subscribe to keep up to date.